I'm Abel's Box, the stream professor, and this is my 4K video photo audio streaming podcast production studio tour for 2021. It's been a wild ride going from making videos out of a bedroom in my parents' house to multiple apartment iteration studios over time to building my own studio here in a garage at a house I bought myself. I cannot wait to show you. Finally time. I owe you all a studio tour. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the Epos Box Studio Tour, the Stream Professor Headquarters of sorts for 2021. This has been the culmination of six months of building and planning on top of, you know, all the moving vlogs you already saw. I teased you long enough with those. It is finally time to do a formal, proper studio tour. And I could not be more excited. I am so incredibly proud of this space. I honestly, firmly believe that of all the crazy multi-million dollar whatever studios you might see on YouTube, that I have built here what would be the most hyper-functional in terms of use per space studio you will ever see here on YouTube. And I am so incredibly proud of that. And it is something that drives me and keeps me creatively and just mentally energized to keep working and producing as many videos as high quality as I can here on this channel to teach you all about technology and streaming and the like. I really appreciate it. It is thanks to your all support as well as the support of our sponsors and I could not be more grateful. So just to get explanations out of the way, we're starting here in the boring entryway, but we're gonna start the actual tour with the most interesting part of the studio, of course. But I wanna give you a little bit of preparation of what to expect here. Of course, like I said, I do believe in terms of overall usability and functionality I have packed into this space, that this is the most hyper-functional studio you will see here on YouTube. This is a garage. If you missed all the moving vlogs, I'll have a whole playlist in the description below. This started out as a standard slab garage on a slab of concrete. It came with drywall already set up in the walls and ceilings as well as a ton of outlets but I had to add networking carpet sound isolation as well as turn it into a space that didn't look like a dirty old garage as it started with on top of air conditioning and things like that it was a blast it was a lot of work and it turned into something absolutely phenomenal uh, and basically every space here serves at least two or three different purposes between video shooting actual you know day-to-day -day work gaming everything else and I think it's phenomenal. So it's divided into four quadrants. The first one is this storage entryway area, which we'll cover last because it's least interesting. Then we have the game room quadrant of sorts. Then we have my actual work corner where my desk and my workstations and all of that happens. And then we have the storage slash workbench quadrant as well, which we'll cover in high depth because it has a lot of stuff going on too. So like I said, it, th this is going to be not the cleanest studio tour you've ever seen because I don't believe in the empty white walls and white desk and barely anything on your desk because to me, people who have setups like that either have way too much time to spend cleaning and organizing or don't do a whole lot, but I also come from the perspective of someone who has to have everything out and in front of me in order to do the work and so things are a little bit messy. So there is still a little bit of mess on my desks and things like that because I always have ongoing projects. So there's never a point where it's just perfectly clean and I'm not doing anything because I always have 50 million things going on. But I'm also at the point where I'm ready to start making modifications and evolutions. So I want to show you how it is now. So as it starts changing, you guys can follow along with me. Enough talking. Let's get into it. So, of course, we have to start with the more fun part. The game room or the game corner or the game quadrant. This was designed to effectively slot in replace the retro room set that I started using for most of 2020 due to us having a baby and my previous shooting spaces, including our living room, becoming baby rooms and me not having anywhere to go. So the retro room that I used primarily for retro gaming and game streaming that was originally supposed to be not really a work room, but just a playroom separate from work, ended up being my main video shooting space and set for many months and you guys really loved the look, the neon lighting, the cool stuff in the backdrop and the overall aesthetic. And of course, it's perfectly on brand for my channel. And so I have recreated that using one of our quadrants here in the studio. And it has 
quite a lot going on that I absolutely love showing off. We are first greeted by the retro gaming side, which is a custom TV stand entertainment center slash desk that my dad and I built for my birthday last year to house this 113 pound beast. This is a Sony broadcast video monitor or BVM. It is a D24, so it's a 24 inch CRT that supports 720p, 1080i, and of course 480p, 480i, and 240p, but it's completely analog, unlike something like a HD CRT like I've had in the past. So no latency, no weird processing, anything like that, and it is 16 by 9 which means the games that can take advantage of it on the Xbox, PS2, or even newer consoles, I have an Xbox 360 and PS3 hooked up here as well, can all look absolutely beautiful, and it is gorgeous. And of course we have all the shelves for every console under the sun that I can hook up to it. I've got a Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 2, PlayStation X, the DVR PS2 system, Xbox, Xbox 360, PS3, GameCube. I've got a DS Nitro emulator. We've got everything hooked up, including a big AV receiver for my big O uh, Hulk speakers that we have going on over here, as well as the Go XLR for handling my audio, as this is also a streaming and recording setup with a big multi-cam array. We have a streaming computer back here running a ton of capture cards and the Threadripper 3960X with a 1650 Super Graphics card because I mainly just need the NVENC encoder for my streams and then all of those PCIe lanes for the different inputs for capture cards because I capture the HDMI consoles over native HDMI and then pipe that to a converter input uh, c component converter for the BVM and then all of my component consoles run through a G-Comp switch uh, component switch and then are spit out to different uh, video processors for capturing and I want to be able to capture most of them at the same time for comparison So I have the RetroTINK, I've got the FrameMeister, the open source scan converter, stuff like that Which makes my coverage of those products a lot easier because I can switch between them without having to do You know timed setup separate captures and so for all of this I am using the CAD E100S microphone It is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. I've switched to it recently. Absolutely love it Got the Vivo mic arm that is set up like a monitor arm, which is absolutely awesome. Got one of those little mic or headphone hangers hanging off the side here for my headphones for me monitoring. And then I have, like I said, a multicam array back here with two Sony A6400s and two Panasonic G7s. One is just here for a big wide angle that shows the rest of my studio just because. The other is an overhead camera that I use to unbox products or do my Pokemon TCG openings because this set is not only my game streaming set but my Pokemon TCG streaming set which I stream over on Twitch. I have a huge collection of stuff that still needs to be open because I haven't been able to stream in a little while. As well as I'll shoot the occasional streamer news or even regular video over here as well because the neon aesthetic is freaking awesome. Little technical tidbits real quick, just running through here. Capture cards include the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, the uh, Blackmagic Deck, actually the Elgato Camlink Pro now, and then the Magewell Quad Capture HDMI capture card to run all of my different inputs and outputs. The Camlink Pro is what my cameras all run into over HDMI. I got little things like a custom stream deck mount for me to have the stream deck mounted on the, you know, up off the table so that I quit hitting buttons when I'm opening card binders or what have you. It's made by my buddy AD Wheeler. I have links to his Etsy shop in the description below. Freaking awesome stuff. Um, as well as impact arms for some of my cameras. I've got the Elgato Keylight and Keylight Air or Keylight Mini. Keylight Air as my main lighting for my cameras. Works great so far. And I will be soon adding a teleprompter to my main camera over here as we unbox in a previous episode of AFK Chat. Moving on beside me here, I've got the cube shelf I had over in the retro room at the old place. I do have two Sony PVMs here that are not hooked up yet. Back in the old place, I had some Raspberry Pis uh, running to them to stream videos to and things like that, and I just haven't gotten around to hooking them back up. But that's the goal is to have the little CRT backdrop displays here. I've got older games and VHS tapes and Pokemon card tins for storage all in here. So it's both aesthetic and functional. You got PS1 games on the top. And then I have another uh, VCR combo CRT up here as well, which will also end up getting a Raspberry Pi or something hooked up to it as a backdrop set piece. For now, it is just powered off until I get to it. And then the bottom true cubes down here have little cube storage bins for handheld consoles, controllers, things like that. Let's flip around. And here we have my game storage corner. This is the first backdrop piece that I ever had as a set at my first apartment. It's a big game media shelf from Wayfair that my parents bought for me for my first apartment. It holds most of my case collections of games. So we've got everything from original PlayStation, Wii, Xbox, Xbox 360, PS2, PS3, PS1, 
DS, Game Boy Advance, GameCube. We've got PSP, PS Vita, some of my Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 games all on this shelf, stored and ready to also look awesome, but also be picked up to play it. I've got some PS5 stuff running up that shelf as well. And then this shelf contains my video game magazine collection, which I am quite proud of, even though I don't really go for anything super like complete of any specific set or anything like that. But I love my classic video game mags. I held on to everyone that I could convince myself to as a kid. Unfortunately, I did get rid of some and I do regret that as I go on. But I've got classic video game magazines, newer video game magazines, newer retro video game magazines, game guides, books on video editing, art inspiration books, Pokemon binders, comic books, the like over here, which is a lot of fun to have integrated here. I always need more bookshelf space though, so you know. And then of course we have my helmet, Tower of Power, which you can barely see, maybe if I get some light on it there, there we go. We've got my helmet tower, which has my Halo 3 Collector's Edition helmet, which I absolutely love. I've got my Halo Infinite uh, Halloween costume helmet that I picked up from Target this past year when Halo Infinite was supposed to launch. And then I've got the Doom Eternal Collector's Edition helmet and the Doom 64 Collector's Edition helmet from the Limited Run Games Collector's Edition run of that. That brings us in kind of a gradient to the more modern gaming setup here as we have the LG C10 or CX OLED behind me. This is the 48 inch model. I already posted a full review up on my channel. This thing is incredible. HDMI 2.1, 4K 120 Hertz, G-Sync or Adaptive Sync. It's an OLED, so the blacks are incredible. The HDR performance is incredible. It plays uh, so good and I do not get to use it enough for how amazing of a panel it is. This is where I game on my PlayStation 5, my Xbox Series X, as well as kick back in my Big Joe beanbag chair here and watch some good old classic movies and the like. Can't speak highly enough about it. Got the uh, the Sound Blaster X Katana soundbar going down on the TV stand, uh, which is all right, served me pretty well for the past five years, I think, since I reviewed it originally. And the TV stand is actually the TV stand my old HD CRT came on whenever I picked it up. And so I repurpose everything I can in this space. Over here is my wall of monitors that I built kind of inspired by a G4 TV setup that I saw forever ago. Uh, I covered this during my moving blogs when we were setting up the studio. I've got four Insignia. They're only 720p LED TVs. Uh, but they do the job. They're on Vivo monitor mounts that are mounted to the stud right next to the window here. So it does block off the window. Uh, theoretically, I could just move them out if I wanted the light from the window, but I've been fine with it so far. I've got some more of my lanyard collection and stuff like that kind of covering up the monitor mounts. It looks pretty good. Currently, I just feed them all running Twitch when I have them in the backdrops. Uh, they're not great TVs. The, the Twitch apps freeze all the time too, uh, but for just a backdrop setup that works fine for now. My goal actually here, I have a little capture PC down in the floor next to this TV stand that has like an 8700K and a 2070 in it. My goal is actually to set this up with either OBS using remote control plugins or some sort of video DJing software and actually be able to just display cool graphical assets and things like that that I can customize on these TVs specific to the videos I'm shooting and the like, including a monitor I have way up on a shelf over there. Currently, I don't have that set up or anything yet, but that is the long-term goal with that. All right, now we keep skirting along here as we get into our next quadrant. This is kind of like a gradient towards that quadrant. The table behind me is my retro computing corner, which might sound a little silly to say, because currently I have on it the 3D 120Hz PlayStation 3 TV that I unboxed on a recent streamer news and been playing around with, uh, but behind that is a Mac SE from the 80s. Uh, but here I have my childhood, well, my aunt owned it, but I played a ton on it. Childhood, Windows 98 gaming computer. It's a gateway, has an Intel Pentium 3, has a Voodoo 3 as well graphics card. Currently have Windows 98 running on it, which for whatever reason is only running at 75 hertz, so it flickers a little bit on camera. Uh, but this has been a blast to have set up. And then below it, I have my Windows XP gaming computer and a bigger different CRT that I swap out from time to time. And this is the only desk that I use in my entire home office or studio office here that was bought instead of built. This is a table I picked up off of Amazon that has the metal support beams underneath along with a thick piece of particle board or whatever, specifically because it would be more reinforced to hold the weight long-term over of the CRTs without bowing, whereas the rest of my desks are custom built. So 
wanted to highlight that. But this is, I usually try to make it look a little bit bigger than it is with tighter angles, just because it is such a small set. Uh, but so far, I love having this easily accessible. And it's a little cramped with the tower on board and things like that, but it's still fun to pick up and play some older games on. This studio tour, of course, would not be possible without our amazing sponsor, Nerd or Die. They probably have new stuff going out right now, but I don't have my ad copy in front of me. But I wanna, I wanna be candid with you in that Nerd or Die's support through the year of 2020 with everything going crazy, with me having a baby, with lots in the world changing, Nerd or Die has been the sponsor that we had for all of 2020, helping us produce new shows, helping me stick it through, and making a huge difference in this studio being possible. They have incredible stream layouts that really only take a couple clicks to set up a multi-scene layout in OBS Studio, which is phenomenal. Uh, they have high quality widgets, alerts, overlays, starting soon screens, all sorts of visuals, and they're constantly releasing free stuff like their automatic graphics switcher so you can have alternating lower thirds that is just a basic drag and drop HTML file that they developed and released for free. They have amazing stuff to really make your stream look professional and you have different options and customizations and even the source files if you want to modify an After Effects or pick and choose your elements so you can truly make a standout stream that looks professional and stands out from everyone else. And you can save 15% on your order with coupon code EPOSVOX over at EPOSVOX.GG slash nerd or die. And the retro corner officially transitioned us into the new quadrant, which is primarily my workspace, my workstations, my desk, all of that jazz. And so behind me, I have an array of five monitors. These are the Dell UP2718Qs. I covered them in my Monitor Roulette series a couple years ago. They are wonderful 4K60 HDR10, very high quality production monitors used for color grading and color accurate work, which I of course use for video editing at my main desk here. We've got a custom keyboard I built with box royal switches and have absolutely loved them. Got the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. I've got the PC Panel Pro, Go XLR, Stream Deck XL, another Stream Deck mounted on the cool custom Stream Deck mount I showed you. I've got the PreSonus uh, Aris 5, I believe, studio monitor speakers, Lexar HR2 hub. I've got the Blackmagic SSD dock mounted under the desk like I showed at the previous place. I've got the Sony A7C as my main desktop webcam, A cam sort of going on here. Uh, mounted in the Glide Gear TMP100 uh, teleprompter. I've got a 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens on that A7C. I've got the Ninja V for recording the camera feed because I'm still running into that frame drop issue that seems to be related to how OBS loads direct show devices these days. Still chasing that down. I've got the Ninja Inferno for recording my desktop as well. Mounted overhead, we have another Panasonic, I think this one's actually a G85 for my unboxing sections on streamer news and AFK chat and things like that. And that is my main workstation. This is where I do most of my work here at this part of the desk. I've got the Aperture 120D and a Light Dome Mini, or Light Dome 2, actually, not the Mini, Light Dome 2 uh, as my main key light for this. I am actually switching it to the Aperture 200X soon, as that will be allow me to get the color temperature I want a little bit finer and be a little bit brighter overall. So I'm excited to do that, as well as the Light Dome SE, which is ever so slightly smaller than this one, which will eat up, because this that, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but this is my main workflow setup is these two monitors and that desk and of course it runs my custom uh, super not so uh, video editing PC that I covered uh, as I built it and water cooled it. It's in the Fractal Design Define 7 XL case with the custom wheels uh, mounted printed from Windle. It's got the Threadripper 3970X, Titan RTX, 128 gigs of RAM, SSDs galore, Awesome little workstation, 10 gigabit networking run throughout the space. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and this is how I do most of my work for 4K 60 and 4K video editing and tutorials and video production. I've got another Vivo mic arm here with the RE20 swung around here. And this I actually have run into the Audient Evo 4 audio interface. The Go XLR is primarily used for all of my audio routing just to my speakers and headphones and all the virtual devices I want. Uh, but I also have the Sennheiser HMD26 headset that I use for some of my streams as well run into the Go XLR also. The chair I'm using is the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2. Still out of all the chairs that I've reviewed and tested so far has been my favorite. Over here on this side of the desk is the super messy side that has a million and one things going on. I've got the next gen consoles underneath for doing all of my captures for Digital Foundry and 
capture card testing and the like. I've currently got my sleeper gaming PC in the same gateway case that my Windows 98 rig is in that I've been working on. I've got two, one, a 1440p 144 hertz monitor, a 1440p 60 hertz monitor for gaming and game streaming setup stuff that I have over here. And then back there is the ASUS ultra wide 100 hertz monitor that I reviewed a couple years ago, hooked up to the M1 Mac mini that I've been slowly getting around to testing and using for streaming and things like that to figure out what kind of stuff it's good at, because it doesn't actually compare to video editing on my main workstation, despite what all of those, I'm selling my Mac Pro for an M1 iMac videos will tell you, it's not the same at all. Below this section of the desk, I also have all of my different uh, test benches for streaming configuration. So I've got like a low, medium, and high uh, configuration setup going for testing streaming settings and how they affect different performance rigs and things like that. Uh, and those are run through a level 1 text KVM, which is pretty cool. Back on the walls, we have the Elgato sound foam tiles that I showed off during my moving vlog and testing of those. And I've got the Elgato light strips wrapped around them. And in some places, the adhesive is hold up, held up. And in some places, I've had to go through and zip tie them to... Uh, the frames, which is fine. You can't really tell. Still looks pretty great. On the shelves above me, it's mostly display stuff. So I've got a massive VHS collection. I've got classic PC games. I've got things that I've taken to conventions to get signed, such as my first InVink GPU. I've got my first capture card box. I've taken, I took that one to LTX to get signed by you all and the LTT crew and things like that. And then on this shelf, I have my PC box games and some graphics card boxes and the like as well. I also keep an Avermedia PW513 webcam over there for the overhead view, which looks ugh, so good. This whole desk, which I used to call Megadesk until everyone started calling their desks Megadesk, is completely custom built by me and my wife and my dad at one point for some of the iterations. The desktop itself, is, I believe, is one and a half inch MDF or maybe just one inch. I don't remember off the top of my head. And then the legs are made out of two by sixes. And for the most part, it's held up perfectly fine. I did end up replacing my primary desktop piece here that we moved with because that one had already survived a couple moves and was starting to bow over time. Uh, but overall, with that one piece replaced, everything else is held up just fine. And I did add an extra little small leg made of two by fours in the back to help with sag and bowing just in case. That way it lasts another couple, four years or so. As much as the other quadrants of the studio are, especially the game room side, of course, this is where I spend the majority of my time. So if I'm talking to you on Discord or responding to comments or whatever, I'm sitting in this chair, in this corner of the studio, working away at my work and my videos and things like that. And I absolutely love it. I love how functional it is having all three of these setups in this one desk corner here. I am perhaps sacrificing some of the desk space back in that corner by having the ultra wide blocking part of it. But realistically, like I have everything I need at my fingertips to just work and go. And by having my main workstations under the desk, I they have air filters, that's fine, and a vacuum. Uh, I get to keep the noise levels down and it's still perfectly fine to record over here, which is great. The Aperture 120D, as well as the light for the workbench as we move to the next quadrant, is actually mounted on a Veripole that just goes ceiling to floor, which is pretty cool. Now we move on to the last of the interesting sections before we wrap up with honestly is not a great, you know, a super interesting section, but I know people are gonna ask about it. And this brings us to the workbench side of things in our third quadrant here of source. This is the same workbench I've had since our second apartment. I just keep reusing it. It's held up totally fine. Again, we got one inch to one and a half inch MDF, two by sixes for the legs. We've got shelves underneath so I can store all my extra computer parts and hard drives and soldering stuff and cables and tools. I've had to buy a lot of tools since moving for various things that we've built. And of course I have the same pegboard that we've had the whole time. It, it, it's hanging in there slowly, but surely it's dying, but it's hanging in there for now. We've got tools. We've got the Gamer Nexus screwdriver kit. I've got my own. I've got caulking and cables and water cooling gear and blue shop towels and everything you need to modify and build computers and water cool and custom projects. And I've got my soldering iron and soldering station stuff going on as well. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, again, everything designed to be as hyper-functional as possible. So it is a small amount of space, but just enough to really get the kind of work that I need done. And then I also have lighting and cameras hooked up. So I've got it set up to be the same kind of PC building streaming station and you know if i need to go record video of me working on a computer for computer review or what have you i have all of the tools available here in this tiny compact space it's lit with a godox sl60w with an aperture lantern and then i have the aperture tri 8 led panel with the easy box up above the monitor mounted over here available for lighting as well and i technically above the pegboard have a quasar tube that i could use if i need more overhead lighting but so far 
I don't need it. I've got Stream Decks run, I've got a computer set up to use the stream, I've got a monitor over here and over here, so I always see where I have going. And then currently I have two cameras set up here, but I am adding a third for my main face angle because I don't currently have that installed yet. Uh, in this corner I have the Zcam E1 with a fisheye lens that I used in previous streams. It's still available here as well. Overhead I have a Sony A5100, and this thing is ceiling mounted on a motorized slider. Absolutely insane, stupid idea that I had, because the goal with this whole studio was to use all of the gear that I had sitting on shelves and that I had either bought off a harebrain idea and never really put to use, or I got sent for a review, or what have you. All the gear that I didn't need readily available to do shoots like this, I wanted to be able to use up or get rid of, so that I stopped having so much stuff in my way. And one of the ways I did that was going completely overkill with setups like this. So I've got my Godox SL60W that I didn't use anymore with the extra aperture lantern that I had as my main light over here. I've got the LED panel up here that I didn't use anymore as my lighting for that. And I had a motorized slider that I had only used once or twice and didn't really have a huge use for because it doesn't hold my bigger camera. Uh, mounted that bad boy on the ceiling with the baby plate, aimed down with the A5100. Now. I'm probably not going to use it in motorized slider mode very often just because it's hard to get the timings right and the one time I did that for a computer building montage you all hated it, understandably so, uh, but it does allow me to just press a button and easily adjust the position of where it is so depending on what I'm working on on the workbench I can always get the right angle which is huge and I no longer have microphones attached to that because Clock Audio, the company that I reviewed that does the embedded audio in, you know, workplaces and things like that, they hooked me up with the solution. You can actually see one of the microphones just barely right there. I have a stereo pair of their C31 microphones with grommets integrated directly into my pegboard and then run out to my Behringer UMC22 or UM204 HD, I forget which one I have, uh, via XLR and they're just built right into the pegboard. So thankfully my workbench is detached from the pegboard. The pegboard's wall mounted, the uh, workbench is not, it's just free floating. So anything I do on the workbench won't make handling sound into the microphones. If I do mess with the pegboard too much, of course some sound might come through, but they've got grommets and everything. So it, so far in my testing, it's been great and it's not like I'm regularly banging the pegboard anyway. So I've got a nice stereo image of the microphone audio pointed directly at me here working at the workbench and it sounds oh so good and I can't wait to hear it for you all to hear it in more streams and PC building videos and things like that because these are great they stay completely out of my way get the exact audio I need in the space reject a little bit of background noise here and like I said they're integrated directly into the pegboard which is freaking awesome super shout out to clock audio for the hookup again because this has been a life I, 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 did, I was always unhappy with how the audio sounded in my, our previous PC building space, but I didn't really have the means to change it much, and I really didn't want to commit to having to charge and use a lav kit every time I wanted to spontaneously, you know, do stuff over here. So this has been the perfect setup so far. Yep, that's not going to work. <laughs> I think I can call myself lucky with that one. I don't know why I was working before. Yikes! One secret superpower of this workbench setup is that it's actually two different sets in one. So I have the workbench set itself, which I can use as a backdrop set or as what I face when I'm working on the computers. So that's already two sets in one. So I guess it's three sets in one because I also have a motorized backdrop system here. So if I drop it down, I have four different reams of Savage Paper and a piece in the way here. It's not perfect, but motorized backdrop to where I can get colored paper backdrops that I use for my explainer sections where more information dense stuff, I don't want to have a complicated distracting backdrop going. I can do purple, I can do gray, I can do white. White does not want to drop at the moment because it's not tightened enough. And I can do black as well. And of course I can put a colored LG RGB LED behind me and cast color onto any of these to make them the color that I want on top of that. And so I can completely black this out and you never even know the workbench is here on top of the fact that I have a more professional education-y style set to work with in the first place, which is freaking awesome. This thing was a pain in the butt to set up and ceiling mount and all of that. And like I said, one of the sections apparently is still not tightened enough to actually work. But overall, this is great and has been a huge upgrade to the production value of some of the videos that I have produced. And it's all just controlled with this one little remote. And that brings us to where we started effectively with this studio space, which is the entryway 
to where we come into the studio, and the storage wall, which of course was where the garage door was originally. And that is the magic of what I have done with the studio space here, is frankly, you really wouldn't know, unless you're looking for super fine details, that this was a garage in the first place. For the most part, I have done what I consider to be a great job covering up that fact for like the vast majority of this place. If we go all the way to this corner, this is where the AC unit is uh, that we built up for this place. We do have a centralized heating and air unit that we have hidden behind here. I do plan on getting some neat like arcade carpet style fabric or something to wrap around this with some cool lights or something uh, after, since we got it ins insulated. But for now, it's just here. And then in the far corner, we have storage for ladders and the vacuum and things like that that just stays kind of out of the way. And then this shelf is supposed to be camera gear and audio gear that I need to have access to, like not in the attic, but I don't use on hand for every shoot and don't need, you know, regularly available at every point in time. And that's what this is supposed to be. None of this storage is finished, which is why I'm kind of just going on and doing this video now, because it's not going to be finished for a while. If we move on from this shelf, then we have what is supposed to be my review unit shelf. So, so stuff that I still have on deck to cover and review, like this mixer here, I have a whole bunch of webcams I bought on Amazon Prime Day to review and compare microphones, things like that, or stuff that I'm still saving for comparisons in the future that I may have already covered. This little shelf right here is actually on wheels, and this is my gear cart. This is the gear that I might need on hand at any point in time for a particular video. So this is all the stuff I might regularly use. This is, of course, a little bit more than that overall, uh, but we've got lights that I would use to cast color lighting on things if I don't need my specific RGB LED tubes like I have here. I've kind of mostly moved on to these. I use these mostly at older sets, but I do have these, you know, both available in case I want to use them. I've got one of my foam heads for headphone cover reviews and things like that. I've got more headphone stands, green screen uh, tape, masking tape, microphone stands. I've got a gimbal that I've used like a total of three times, but I'm trying to use more. I've got cans of atmosphere spray, AKA like haze or smoke or what have you. So I can just like, add a cool effect to product shots. And now we got a nice hazy look. I use it every once in a blue moon. Got my teleprompters. This tote right here contains lens filters. So my pro mist and things like that. This contains my lenses that are either vintage lenses or lenses for my micro four thirds cameras. So my GH five S, which I have right here or my Panasonic G sevens and G 85s. This is my EF mount lenses. So my full frame stuff like my hundred millimeter macro lens here, things like that. Got my photo taking camera down here, which is the 6D Mark II. I've got grip gear, so I've got uh, quick release plates, mounting, stuff like that, extra audio pieces. We've got lens converters. Got my clapper, which I do use, and I've strapped Velcro to the back of it to attach my dry erase marker. I've got elements that I use for uh, backdrops of video shoots, stuff I put products on for B roll shots. I've got more little tripods and extra camera pieces and the like. And then I've got a knife that I sometimes use for unboxings. I've got clamps that I use for certain things, all on this easy rolly cart. And on the back is one of my mini secrets that, I'm or that I maintain for managing everything and keeping everything hyper-functional. This is actually a cable management strip that you would mount in a server rack. Um, it's kind of dangling here. I got to get a better mounting solution, but I actually have this on all over this storage shelf as well. And this is more for PC parts. So I've got PCIe cards, internal cards, power supply stuff. Um, but then we move on to other stuff as well. So like these are all power cords in here, but then this is a whole tote full of microphones and it's already overflowing out here. This is all audio cables. So XLR, things like that. I've got motherboards and motherboard boxes, a case I've never used, the O11 Dynamic. But all over this one, I have these cable management things gripped to it as well with bongo ties um, that I keep all of the cables that I would regularly access that I don't want to dig through totes for. So I've got XLR and mostly audio, but some USB cables for microphones on this one and then I've got USB cables over here. I've got uh, video cables over here, so HDMI, DVI. I've got power cables and networking, SDI, stuff like that, uh, SFP Plus, stuff that I would use regularly that I want to access and not have to dig through totes for, which has been a huge part of the hyper functional aspect of this. Huge shout outs to Mr. Greggles. If you caught the extended cut of my interview, we focused on this quite a bit for the first few minutes of that interview with Mr. Gregos because he has these actually wall mounted. I don't actually have the wall space to wall mount these, so I mounted them on my storage shelves, which I felt is the next best solution. And this is kept on a wheeled cart that I just kind of keep here going uh, so I can roll it around wherever I'm shooting video here, as well as just to be able to move it out of the way whenever I need to access stuff. This was bought as a last uh, option. 
This was the last shelf that I bought because I just needed a little bit more storage. Um, and it actually fits right here, but instead we have my wardrobe. So yes, I actually bought a carded wardrobe here to keep all of the clothes that I would use in a standard video shoot. So I've got my cool little jackets, I've got my window sweaters, I've got my PlayStation sweaters, all the shirts that you see in videos pretty much sit on this rack and allow me to alternate between them should I need to, you know, shoot multiple videos in one day or something like that, which I actually do quite frequently. So that's stored here. I've got modifiers, flags, and things like that down below. And this just kind of stays here out of the way while still allowing me easy access to stuff. Since this is detached from my house and my baby is asleep sometimes in the way that I would go into the house, so that becomes problematic. If I just need to shoot a bunch of videos, I have all the shirts right here ready to rock, including, you know, shirts that I would throw over top of other shirts and things like that, making it super easy. And then I just keep most of my rolling cart light stands. These are the impact rolling light stands here. Um, and my camera's on wheels, so I can just like pull it along with me here. All of this is on wheels and would just kind of sit right here in front of this out of the way and make it easy to manage. And then lastly back here, we of course have a wall of storage here. So on the back side of the TV stand that all my retro stuff is on, we have all these plastic drawers that I've built up over the years uh, stored on here. And so I have them mostly for my retro room stuff, although I do have some dedicated to webcams and capture cards, uh, but I've got component cables, power bricks, controllers, all of that kind of stored back here. At some point this needs a major revamp uh, but at the moment, it's doing its job. And then we have my server rack. So this is a 25U server rack. I believe it's an APC net data. That doesn't sound right. It, it doesn't actually have a model number on it, but I picked it up for $75 from a government surplus sale up in Indianapolis, and we, it barely fit in our car, and we drove it down here. I have a whole video on that from a few years ago, and I shoved it in my apartment. The most, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done for this YouTube channel, uh, but it is pretty much completely full on both sides. It has my custom Unraid server, another server I built forever ago that is honestly turned off most of the time, and then all of my Synology NAS and all of my 10 gig networking. So I have a bunch of switches in here. I have 10 gig networking run throughout the studio uh, using Cat 6A cables. And you can see here, the only spot that you actually see them is routed around the door here because there was no other way to get them to go across. Now I know a lot of people get super picky about this and they're like, oh, you should have done your runs through the walls. The issue is, is this is a garage. So first and foremost, we installed the AC and all the ducting and stuff up in the attic before I was able to do the networking in the first place. So we would have to be squishing all of that and climbing over it in order to try to drop this through the wall. But secondly, where the roof actually meets where the wall opens up into the attic, uh, it is too steep of an angle, especially with the nails coming through from the roof and stuff, to really be able to manage that. So between needing to climb over ducting and trying to get that really steep angle, it just wasn't going to work out. Plus, I was doing all of this myself, and that's not something I really want to mess with anyway. And I'm trying to keep runs as short as possible, because a lot of this is run through SFP Plus transmitters, which can only do 10 gig up to a certain length. Uh, we, I did actually just run them around the perimeter going both directions of the studio. And so this is the only spot where you see it routed over the doorway. And I think it just kind of adds to the kind of hacky Silicon Valley vibes. Uh, and then I have this TV on a cart here that I often use as a backdrop for B-roll in certain shots, but it's also just as my Unraid kind of output here. I have a bunch of light stands and green screens stored in the corner for, at the moment, the, stu the server rack is kind of tore apart because I'm finishing up my Unraid server and things like that. But I've got roughly 500 to 750 terabytes of storage in this box here, which is absolutely bonkers. But that's the life of a video production house, I guess. I've also even mounted my own USB powered 120 mil fans on the front of this uh, server rack door here to allow me to push more air into the Unraid server because the drives run pretty hot in it. So I originally had a bunch of people insisting that I set up, you know, walls to divide up these spaces into different rooms to get the most out of it. And I understand how that might look a lot better given what you're trying to work with, depending on your setup. But that did not really align with the goals that I wanted because I don't think this space is big enough to really divide like that. And so instead, the center here is completely open, allowing me free reign like a TV set to put the camera at different angles and everything that I want. So because I often shoot with, you know, this is a really wide angle that can get everything in view and make every room look big. I don't usually shoot with this wide of an angle. And so I wanted to be able to put the camera anywhere and everywhere and also use the center with this Flexispot sit stand desk that they sent me a couple years ago and I have been a huge fan of. Motorized, I get to align it with my tripod, pretty freaking sweet. I can use this to then use any of the different quadrants that I want as backdrops for my B-roll and have universal access to everything. And I think that this has been 
an incredibly important part of my workflow here that I am so glad I didn't divide up. I do think in the future, if I had a bigger space, I would want dedicated office spaces as well for separate sets or an editing room or what have you. But currently, other than sound treatment, which I have mostly worked out here, I do believe that keeping it all one big open space was the right call, and I absolutely love it. This is, I got custom sign made by my mom, uh, which doesn't show up without lighting on it at the moment, but that's fine. I got stickers on the door, dry erase to manage, neon and LED lighting everywhere. And this is my home garage studio, which if I were to slap a clickbaity title on, this would easily be like a, I mean, if we're including like the labor, the parts, all of the equipment I have in it, we're talking like a 250 grand, 500 grand studio. I hate when people put that in the titles because I've acquired so much of this over time, so much of this I didn't acquire at cost in the first place and labor was free through my parents and myself, but this is where I do my work day in and day out. And this is a place that I am so incredibly proud of and it's such a better place than working out of small apartment bedrooms or trying to combine our living room into an office studio space and getting comments every day about the mess. I still don't keep this super clean as some of this has shown, I'm always, I always have projects running. The way my ADHD brain works is if stuff isn't laid out in front of me, I don't know what exists or I don't know to get back to it. So I have to keep that messy to some degree, but this is so much of a better space to work with. And I'm so grateful to you all for your support, for working with me on patience in terms of content during the move, for your contributions on Nebula and Patreon and through our new merch, eposvox.gg slash merch. All of this on top of your viewing and subscribing in the first place are how this is possible. And I cannot thank you enough as I just hit the microphone. So here it is. I know I'm six months late. I expected to be able to turn this around sooner, but I just had to kind of get to work and then I kept making messes of it. So I went on a cleaning spree recently and wanted to show it. Just as a final note, because I know people will be asking, the gear that I shoot most of my formal on-camera videos at that aren't at the two desk stations is the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. I picked this up a couple years ago. It has been a workhorse of a camera producing beautiful results other than my own skin tone I've had a lot of trouble with. Um, but it doesn't have any sort of autofocus, so I would happily uptrade this right now for a Canon C500 Mark II or something like that that has the dual pixel autofocus and a bigger sensor. I have a magic booster in it, which is basically a speed booster, but it's a lens mount replacement instead of a, something you put on the back of your lens that gives me a full frame field of view here. Uh, and so that's been serving me great. I'm currently shooting on the Deity interview kit, the HDTX and all of that. The Deity makes wonderful audio here, uh, but my sit down shots were all with the Sennheiser MKH 416 into a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. Uh, lens I have on it is currently a Zine uh, 16 millimeter cinema lens, uh, but typically I use the Canon 24 to 70. I've got the Aperture Nova P300C right now blasting on me with the softbox, but I also have the overhead lights on so you can actually see most of the space. And yeah, usually I have a bounce or something going on as well. Thanks so much, guys. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions over on the Discord about the studio tour. This is it. This is what I'm working with. I know it's chaotic. I know it's overstimulating to some with all the signs, the stickers, the LEDs. Uh, but this is what really drives me, keeps me energized day to day. I get to come into this space, AC blasting so it's cool off because it's super hot during the summer here. Um, and just get to be my most creative self, blast some music, play some retro games, get some sick B-roll. And I am absolutely loving it. This turned out way better than I thought it could, even if we didn't get to achieve everything I wanted to with it, and I could not be more grateful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and be kind, rewind.